praise the Lord. God bless you all one more time. We thank you for tuning in and you are welcome to this evening session. Before I continue, I want to take this opportunity once again to thank all of you for your prayers, your support, your data, your phones, your laptops, your um, prayers, all that you have done for this program, these five men to be successful, to keep it in touch, to keep us in fellowship, to keep on talking to one another. God richly bless you. Once again, I'm grateful to the media team, which has done marvelously well. God richly bless them. God will surely reward them. Brothers and sisters who are really, really faithful in their tithe, they are offering, they are seeds, they are prayers, God will reward you. We, I take this opportunity to thank our precious Pastor Isaac John Ben Tay for his support, wonderful message, inspiration, deliverance messages that has also helped us to stay in the midst of this pandemic. It is not easy to lead. It's a complex thing, very difficult. And uh, we are grateful first unto God for the patience, the anointing, the wisdom that bestowed upon our precious pastor, John Bente, to stay the affairs up to this time. May God bless him, bless his family, protect him, and the blood of Jesus continue to speak for him. God bless you all. I again want to take this opportunity to announce these programs to you so you listen to the following announcement. Ajay Kojo Church, Nugwa Church, Goy, and Dawa Churches. They will be meeting on Sundays from coming Sunday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Then, Tema Church will meet, will start meeting at 9.30 in the morning. Spin Text Church will meet at 3 p.m. Then, Atareka Church will also meet at 4 p.m. All protocols should be observed. Today is the last one that we are screaming from this place. From Sunday, we are moving to our various churches. And that is the, uh, the time that has been announced. You take notes. The Sunday, you meet in our fellowship. God bless you. We will now turn to the scripture, the word of God, to um, encourage ourselves and establish ourselves before we approach the word. We want to talk to the author, the one who wrote it. That is what the, the mystery about the word of God. God who wrote the book is always with his book. Unlike other books, when they are written, the author will be in America, the book will be in Ghana. But this is a mysterious book. The one who wrote it, the author is always with his book. So we want to 
read, you talk to him, and he guides you. So we want to pray that the Lord will guide us. Father, forever you are great and mysterious. We can never by our mind understand you. But by faith, we thank you that your grace has taken over our lives as we approach your word. If you see you physically, we will run. But thank God, so wise, you reveal yourself unto us in the word. As we approach you, speak to us and lead us in the name of Jesus. All the powers, demons that hate the truth, hate the word, I come against them in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus rebuke them. Lord, take over. I am in your hand. Use me as instrument to minister to your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Tonight, I want to speak on a very interesting topic. Very common with us. Everyday life. And uh, the title of the message is The Paradox of Giving. The Paradox of of giving. When you say something is a paradox, it, it means that the conclusion statement seems logically unacceptable or it looks contradictory. So, if I speak, it looks contradictory. That's why I'm talking about the paradox of giving. And uh, it is not logic that we use when we come to the Bible. With the word of God, whatever it says, by faith, God says so. We believe it. So, listen to the paradox of giving. And I want you to take the word of God by faith. And it will help you. I read from Galatians chapter 6, verse 6 through to 8. Let him that taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all things. I want to repeat it again. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all things. Verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mock. For whatsoever a man soweth that shall he reap. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall also he reap. So whatever you sow, if you sow bad thing, you read bad. If you sow good thing, you read a good thing. If you sow anything that whatsoever you sow, that you will reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to, the, to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. That's quite interesting. He that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You can't sow to the spirit if you, if you are not in the spirit. Interestingly, as we saw last week, Jesus met a very rich man and he asked him, uh, Jesus, what 
shall I do to be safe? To have eternal life? He realized that Jesus Christ is unique. It's not like the priest, the churches go. There is something special. The man is not popular, but he is special. He's very unique. So he, he approached him, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asked him, go, go and sell what you have and give it to the poor. Go and sell whatever you have. Give to the poor and come and follow me. This rich man could not follow Jesus Christ. Could not carry this simple instruction. He thought when he met Jesus, he was so boastful that oh, the commandment, I have observed all this from my youth. But when he was given the commandment, that will give him eternal life. He, ne he neglected it. Praise the Lord. I want to emphatically say this evening that giving is a commandment of God. The Bible says we, shall, we should not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God and this is the man, a rich man who met Jesus Christ. And Jesus has commanded him, you go, sell whatever you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. This man, with his riches, turned down, because of riches, because of giving, turned down the offer of eternal life. It's serious. Because of riches, because of money, because of wealth, selling this to follow to get eternal life, follow Jesus to get eternal life. This man utterly ignore eternal life. It is a story in the Bible that is supposed to help us to shape our life. As I speak. I know that some people may also be in the same soup, in the same status. Giving has become a problem to many churchgoers, many believers. But this evening, I want to tell you that giving is a commandment of God. The first thing you need to know is that giving is the nature of God. That's why God himself gave the only begotten son that he had. He gave it out. Only begotten son. He gave it out. So I, I don't know whether why your building, your car, your money, giving it out becomes a problem. It is a problem because if that God's nature is not in you, you find it very, very difficult. I want to talk about the paradox. Things that will benefit you. Things that you will get from giving. When you, when you will give what you will get, I want to talk to you about it. The first thing you need to give the first and foremost, you need to give yourself to Jesus Christ. When I'm talking about giving, a lot of minds are going on to money, wealth. But the first thing that every child of God would like to give is to give himself to God. Give himself to Jesus Christ. As Paul exhorted in, in Corinthians, 
He said, hey, God should bless these people. They have done this. But they, have, but they first gave their life to Jesus. They gave their life first to Jesus. To the Lord. Before offering material gifts, donations. So I exhort you, wherever you are, I exhort you to give your life. Give yourself to Jesus. And if you give yourself to Jesus, you will reap Jesus Christ. If you give yourself to Jesus, you will reap eternal life. Praise the Lord. And that is the most important thing. You give yourself to Jesus, you will surely receive Jesus. If you give yourself to Jesus, you will surely reap eternal life. That is very important. But if you ignore Jesus, you will ignore life and you will land in hell. And that is the nature of churches today. That is the nature of the spirits today. That is the nature of Laodicea spirits. We claim, churches claim, they are rich. They have wealth. But the Bible says, they are naked, but they don't know. They are boasting. I am a rich man. We have the greatest church. Our pastors are professors. They have seminary theses. Come to our church. You will see this. Boasting on all these things. And the Jesus that they are supposed to serve in their churches, they turn him down. The spirit is this age boasting on wealth and throw away Jesus. And the Jesus who says he's building the church has to come and be knocking at church's door. Be knocking at doors to come into the churches. They have thrown him away. Throw the word. Throw the Bible out of the churches. Now they are saying our headquarters our pastor says, our, uh, our prophet says, our, uh, our founder says, they are quoting people instead of Jesus Christ who said we build his church. So it's a spirit in this end time. It's a spirit these last days. It's a spirit in the last church age. Laodicea spirit. Rich, but very, very poor. We don't even know. We have thrown away the word. We have thrown away the word that come out of the mouth of God. That had, just as this rich man did. He met Jesus. Jesus gave him the word. Gave him the commandment. He turned it down. Because of wealth. Maybe because of popularity. Jesus Christ churches maybe they were not popular. Maybe uh, they, 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 they look unique and it attracted him. He went to them. Jesus, I want to be like you. What do I do? He knows. He sees Jesus Christ church members. They were naturally, the ladies were naturally beautiful. But he saw that in his camp, people were Jezebel, paint their faces. I see widely. But when it comes to Jesus Christ church, they look neat, natural. That's what attracted him. But to give out and follow the word was difficult. Praise the Lord. And it's a, it's a serious thing that we need to consider. So I urge you, wherever you are, whatever you have given to churches, first give your life. Whatever you are giving to any pastor, any man, any way, first give your life to Jesus Christ. And the paradox is this. You cannot understand. If you give your faith to Jesus, whatever you sow, you will reap it. If you sow your life into Jesus, you will reap Jesus Christ. And if you reap Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. And I urge you not to behave like this rich man that could Turn down, turn out, eternal.
eternal life because of wealth. Praise the Lord. So that is very key to my this evening's discussion. I the next thing you, you receive when you sow, when you sow, I whatever you sow, you will reap. Peter asked Jesus Christ. Ah, Jesus, we have forsaken all. We have forsaken all to follow you. And we have followed thee. What shall be our reward? We have forsaken all. What shall be therefore be our reward? What do we gain from you? Then Jesus answered. And tell him. Verily, verily. When Jesus says very, verily, he means it. That ye have followed me. That's good. In the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve throne, judging the twelve tribes. Wow! When you follow Jesus, when you forsake all, you follow Jesus, you will be with him, judging the whole world. Judging the twelve tribes. That does the end. Jesus continued. And he said, Hey, everyone, ev not every pastor, not the choir, everyone that had forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, shall receive hundredfold. Wow. And shall inherit everlasting life. What a promise. What a wonderful thing. You can forsake your lands. Your wife, your, your, your children, your family. I have only one mother. But what Jesus is saying now, if I forsake my mother and take Jesus, I will get 100 mothers. My sisters are few. But if I forsake them for the sake of Jesus, I will get about 100 sisters. If I forsake my house, maybe sell my house, and come and give to Jesus. I will get hundred houses. And of course, these are the messages preached to Ananias and Sapphira. Okay? What is it? The beginning, they were selling. They were bringing the money. But Ananias said, oh, they sold. I said, oh, hey, my life is not so. No, they couldn't. If you are not a seed, if you are not a seed, it will be very, very difficult for you to understand these things. In Bible, check the records. We say we are Abraham's seed. Giving was not Abraham's problem. Giving was not David's problem. Giving was not Solomon's problem. A giving was not a Mary Madeline's problem. Giving was not Docker's problem. Giving was not colonial's problem. I'm giving you account. And a lot. So if giving, forsaking, is your problem, then I'm challenging you. I'm telling you that there is something wrong and you must check. So if you give, if you sow a seed, one seed, it will die. When it germinates, it will bear fruit and the fruit will be hundredfold. So, whatever you forsake for the sake of Jesus Christ, the word of God is a sure prophecy. You will surely receive one hundredfold. Okay? It's a paradox. You may not understand it, but take it as the word of God, receive it 
by faith. Another thing, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you to tell you this. If you give to the poor, you give to people. You know what you are doing? Naturally, you are raising army of prayer warriors. Listen to me. If you give to people, you are giving to the poor. What you are doing is that you are raising army of prayer warriors. All the people that you are giving something to, they will be praying for you. They will pray for you. If it, if it, right at the, at the instant, they will say, thank you. God bless you. It, it started. When they go home, they say, God, thank you. Oh, God, this man, they will be praying that you live. If they need more, they will come to you. Praise the Lord. So as you give, somebody's prayer will deliver you from accidents. If you give, somebody's prayer will deliver you from, you'll be sacked from the workplace. If you give, your business will prosper so that people will be feeding on you. Because why? They will be praying for you. Praise the Lord. If you give, you are raising, listen to me, you are raising army of prayer warriors to be praying for you. Again, it's a mystery, you may not understand, but I'm telling you, as you give, you see that, as you, it's a, it's a paradox, it's go, it go, you, you receive it, you receive prayer, you receive blessing, your children will be covered. If you give, another thing you benefit, that your children, your descendants, who inherit the good works. Somebody will go for interview. You mention your name. Kwesi Mensa. Hey, is your father uh, Kwesi Mensa who says, uh, uh, are you related to this Mensa? I say, yes. Oh, it's my father. It was, it's my uncle. I say, oh, your father Mensa has done this thing for me. This interview, they will not go talk to you. Hey, you get the employment. Praise the Lord. You will surely get it. But if you don't give, if you don't sow good seed, they mention your name, your same name at the interview. You will see how your, they will scrutinize your children. They will suffer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to share, this is a paradox. If you give, if you, you are somebody who gives, you will not be so much interested in being greedy, being dubious. Why? Because you know, even the money, if you get it, if you get it, you will give it out. Why do I go be, be greedy, find dubious means? No. You know that if God bless me, by the grace of God, if I have it, I will distribute. God himself will bless you. Okay, but if you, you are a greedy person, you see that you, you, you find dubious means. I mean, adding zeros, all manner of things to get houses, getting lands, and you, you are boasting, hey, I have four, four houses, I have five cars. You see, that will be your, your boasting. Okay, and you'll be very, very greedy. But I'm telling you, if you give, you know how to give, your mind will not be so much on greed, do pure means of doing things. No. Because you, don't, you will not boast on property. Praise the Lord. You will boast on Jesus Christ. You will boast of integrity. You will, because you have eternal life, you will boast of integrity. You will fight. If God gives it to you, fine. It's God who blesses. He give it to you, fine, fair enough. God richly bless you in closing. In closing, I go to stress. Please, those who are listening to me, be not deceived. I'm stressing. Be not deceived. God is not mock. You cannot joke with God. The examples are there. The rich man denied. He landed in hell. The, so, whosoever a man saw it, that 
shall he also reap. So whatever you are doing, whatever you are sowing with your mouth, with your hand, whatever you do, remember, you will surely reap it. Okay? The next one. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. It's clear. That is the word of God. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap eternal life. Life is everlasting. Praise the Lord. So I urge you, let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season, it will not be long. We shall reap if we faint not. Keep on doing it. As we have therefore opportunity, once you have the opportunity, the time, let us continue to do good to all men. Especially to them that, of, that are of the same household. Especially to all men. Especially those in the church, those in the assembly, those in the fellowship. Please, it's very, very critical. Let's continue to do good to all men. You don't know who is who. So do good to all men. And God will bless you. If you choose to be a miser, you will be a miserable person. If you choose to be a miser, let me end it for you. You'll be a miserable person. It's a paradox. This evening I urge you, okay, give and you'll be given. It is more blessed to give. God richly bless you for your attention. Father, I pray this very moment for people who find it difficult to give their lives, find it difficult to part with families, find it difficult to part, to forsake families, come to church, do all the family difficult, I pray for your grace upon their life. Help us to be givers. At the end, whatever we sow in you, we will reap it. We thank you for this church. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for this ministry. We thank you for brothers and sisters. And we pray that the blood of Jesus will continue to speak for us. We commit fellowship coming Sundays into your hand as we gather. Your words say, where two or three are gathered, you and they are mixed. Oh Lord, we are expecting your presence and your manifestations. Bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Whosoever is sick, whatever now, I pray, oh Lord, be merciful and tie the one. Whosoever is lacking something, may you provide to the glory of your name. I pray that you will deliver all of us from evil and let your blood cover us. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom.